right, hello everybody, Dave Foster here, and uh, this is episode number two of Geeks and Gear. Um, I actually have the Comcast guys came, set me up with 100 meg down, 20 meg up internet, so we shouldn't have any issues like we did last week. Uh, still turned out decent, we got the questions answered and everything, but everything looks a lot better on this end now. Uh, I did a test hangout this morning, so we are good to go. So today, we have the legendary John P., uh, who is the, the CEO of Livid Lobster, which is Geek Beat. Um, and I know, John, a lot of people that are watching probably do know you, but some don't. So could you kind of uh, introduce yourself and tell us how you got involved with Geek Beat and, and how that all started? Yeah, sure. Uh, well, I'm the, I'm the head fire starter here. <laughs> so basically, my job is to both literally and figuratively light things on fire around here. And uh, <laughs> I guess, you know, uh, it all got started a few years ago when I first met Callie. I was running a little uh, WordPress uh, conference and she came to speak. And one of my co-organizers knew her and he said, hey, let's have this Callie Lewis person come and lecture at the event. And I said, okay, whatever you want to do, I don't care. Whatever, whatever it takes. There we go. <laughs> There's a, they, they really brought my, brought my blowtorch. So, uh, yeah, lest anyone thought that I was kidding about lighting things on fire. So, uh, Callie and I met when she came to, you know, give a little speech, and I thought she was all right, you know, whatever. <laughs> and uh, she hated my guts, which I don't blame her a bit. But true story. True story, true story. No, we, we became friends after that, and uh, next thing you know, we, you know, some point down the road decided that we would we'd get together and pool our talents to try and, and bring fun and entertaining and educational content to the world, and, and that was the birth of a little livid lobster. <laughs> so, so that's an interesting story in itself. Can you talk, talk a little bit about how the livid lobster came to be? All right, well... Uh, this is a true story. So what happened was Callie and I had made a list of like 10 different company names that we sent over to our attorney because we, you know, you, you had to register the company and whatever you choose, the first one's always taken. So you give them a big list and then they kind of go down and whichever one is available, that's what they get. Well, none of them were available. So, uh, he called me up and he was like, Hey, the whole list you gave me is taken. And I was like, look, I don't care what you're going to call it because no one's ever going to know the name of the company. And they know Geek Beat, okay? They know the, the individual shows we do, but not the name of the company. So call it, I don't care what you call it. Call it Livid Lobster for all I care. And he was like, okay, I'll, I'll figure something out. Click. 24 hours later, he calls me up. Bang. Company set up. Cool. What's it called? Livid Lobster. <laughs> Moral of the Which, story, don't ever leave it up to a lawyer to be creative. <laughs> hey, I actually think it's a great name. And then now having the tank and all that stuff, so it, it really fits now. So it's kind of kind of good that it happened, I guess. <laughs> I guess it was, uh, it, was, it was lucky because, you know, it is a memorable name and people mm -hmm. hear it and it's, it's, it's catchy in a sense that you can't forget it. Like once this thing gets in your ear hole, you cannot get it out. <laughs> It's like that little bug on uh, Star Trek, The Wrath of Khan, you know? Yep, yep. <laughs> I don't know. All right, so let's get down to the meat of the interview. This is what people are here to learn, and that are that is what three gadgets uh, do you carry around on a daily, daily basis, and can you pretty much not live without? Okay, well, that's hard to say because, as you know, <laughs> I am surrounded by gadgets. And I don't mean that the way other people mean it. They're like, oh, yeah, I got a lot of gadgets. No, I'm literally, right now I'm literally surrounded by them, and I am every day, and they're changing all the time. But having said that, if you made me narrow it down to three gadgets, I would say the three that, I, that I'm always using, I'm constantly with, number one is my little Pebble watch, and that is something that just started as uh, after CES. Because when I went to CES with Mark Ramsey, he was wearing his, and we drove across the country from Dallas to Las Vegas and back, and he was wearing his, and he kept going on and on and on about it. Like, <laughs> always looking at it, always getting updates on it. I was like, how good could that thing really be? 
by the time we were driving back, we actually stopped halfway home at a Best Buy. I bought it, and we have, I haven't taken it off since. So that's number one. Now, it doesn't go without uh, the companion, its companion, which is the Samsung Galaxy Note 3. And as you can see, I have a warning. Right now it's time to eat. But um, <laughs> it, this, this thing will actually tell my watch that it's time for me to eat. It will also give me all of my text messages, emails, calendar, all kinds of craziness, okay? So, uh, David, I think you got one, and you've done what I've done, which is totally disable the ringer and everything. This thing is on perpetual mute mm -hmm. because this just vibrates. Look, look, I just got an email from Shea Bell right now. Uh, it just vibrates on my wrist. Nobody knows except me. But there is one thing that I will warn you all about. Uh, when you go, when you go to like uh, dinner with somebody and you keep <laughs> checking your watch, yeah, that looks rude. It looks <laughs> rude. You have to ignore that. So, yeah, this this guy is obviously bored by our conversation and wants to go home. <laughs> I don't realize that that's a substitute for this, that or this. You get one of the two, okay? But you know, put them both down. Take the watch off. Eat your damn food, people. <laughs> and I guess my gadget number three is actually a gigantic gadget. I've never told anyone this before. So this is uh, breaking breaking news, if anybody cared, which nobody cares. Hold on. Let me, let me get a drum roll or something here. Right. <laughs> but um, about a couple months ago, I bought a new car. I uh, bought a new Ford Fusion Energy plug-in hybrid electric, completely decked out and loaded. So it's more like having a rolling like 50 gadgets combined into one on wheels that I can take everywhere with me. Well, so and I, I got to say, I, I saw one of the fusions on the road one day and I didn't know what it was. Yeah. I actually turned around and followed it because I wanted to know what it was because it's such a cool, I mean, I thought it was some kind of Jaguar when I yeah. first saw it because it has such a sleek look to it. So I think those are awesome looking cars. And the, now the one you got, that gets like, is that the one that gets like 98 miles a gallon or something? Yes, it is. So uh, as some people know, at my house, I have a big solar array. And so we're generating our own electricity at home. Uh, mostly we're off the grill. We uh, uh, Grill. Off the grid. <laughs> yeah, we uh, know you're not off the grill quite yet. Not off the grill. <laughs> but we're off the grid mostly. Um, in really high energy usage months, we still have a small electric bill. And we're probably going to add some more solar just to get rid of that entirely. But my plan ultimately is to put enough solar on the roof of the house that we're generating all the power we need not only for the house, but also for the cars, and we would like to have all our cars be plug-in electrics so that overnight we charge the cars, we drive them all day, and it's free. It's, it's literally free. We're not even paying for the electricity because we've already invested in the solar panels. That's the goal, but right now we're not quite there, but I do plug it in at night. I only live three miles away from the office, and the car has about a 20-mile range, so that gives me enough range to go from home to work to lunch to work back home with a few miles to spare and I don't burn any gas so the only time I go into gas mode is when I travel further than about 20 miles which I do sometimes when we're running around during a day and uh, right now I'm averaging about 57.6 miles to the gallon in that car. Wow, that's amazing. Pretty good, pretty good. Yeah, I, uh, I, I'm i driving a uh, Subaru Crosstrek right now, and I'm only getting maybe, maybe 27. <laughs> so that, that would be amazing. Even 27 isn't bad. I mean, my last car was an AMG, and I got like 13 and a half. So right. I <laughs> like complete performance, ridiculous consumption vehicle to actually a very luxurious, comfortable ride with amazing gas mileage. So, you know. Well, that will segue right into the next question because I know that uh, in those new fusions, aren't they set up for apps and stuff like that? So, so the next question is actually, what are your three favorite apps? And does that car actually have apps that you can install in it? Yeah, that's a good question. That car does not have apps capability the way I want it to. So Ford does have their proprietary kind of system 
that's good in terms of integrating in for like Bluetooth and SMS and phone calls and things like that. One of the apps that I do enjoy is Pandora. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not like Callie. I like to let somebody else make all my music decisions for me. <laughs> so I just turn on Pandora and they play what they play. I thumbs up or I thumbs down. That's it. And it will integrate into the car, although that car is a weird – between that car and my phone, there's some kind of weird glitch where sometimes it does it even when I don't want it to, but that's okay. Uh, but if I was to talk about actual apps that I use the most, I would say – you want me to narrow it down to three? I do, for well, just for the sake of time. <laughs> okay, Pandora is off the list then. If I okay. had to narrow it down to three, Evernote is number one. So now I'm do like, you – now, for Evernote, is that something you use for – I know you write your shows and the blog posts and stuff. Do you use that for that purpose or other things? Yeah. we. I use Evernote for everything. I have my personal to-do list in there. Um, we use it collaboratively for the team to produce notes uh, to, to go into shows like our Friday shows. If I find something interesting online, I'll drop a note in there and Ben – will go in and he will put that into our show notes. Uh, Callie will do the same thing, et cetera. So I use it for, for the show notes and stuff. Uh, but yeah, I make lists with Evernote. I, I don't use it nearly as efficiently or as much as everybody else, but for me it's just a perfect tool because it's universal. It's everywhere. I can log in online. I can get on my phone, my iPad, my this, that, it's everywhere. So it stays synced up. That's all I want out of it, you know? Mm -hmm. um, I also use GroupMe. A lot, believe it or not, like every day. And that surprises me. I actually had tried that app, and I really liked it. But since Google Hangouts uh, came out, and it's easier for me to explain to my dad and my brothers how to download that than the GroupMe thing because it's, it, it has some things that I don't think they would get. Um, so why that as opposed to Hangouts or something like that? GroupMe is just a habit. The people that it's it's kind of like uh, you know Facebook and Twitter before Google Plus. You know yep, you yep. use one and then you get so invested in it that the change is painful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I I probably should change over to Hangouts because there are some things I don't care for about uh, GroupMe, but it's become routine. So uh, you know with the family and stuff, people check in and 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 that's really primarily what we use it for. But we've also found that using GroupMe uh, at events, we, we have the whole team set up on it. And so when we travel to like like CES, for example, and we have to all keep in contact, GroupMe is actually really, really reliable. And some of the others, even though they may be good, they're not reliable. Gotcha. And, and so, you know, you kind of stick with what is trusted and works. And I'm hoping that Hangouts becomes more uh, robust and, and it may already be there. Uh, but now what we have to do is we have to begin transitioning usage and habits. Habits are the hardest thing to break, you know? Yeah, well, and, and one thing that helped me make the transition into Hangouts is that now on the Android, I have the Moto X, it, you can actually make it your default text messaging app, and I have not found a good native text messaging app on Android until I uh, set up Hangouts to do that, and then it just made sense for me to start using it for the other things as well. So, you know, I communicate with people on my team as well, via Google Hang. I, I forced them to do it. So, But I did used to use GroupMe and I liked that as well, but I, I personally have started just because I can do all of my regular text messages because it's really hard on Android to send an image. You have to send it as an attachment and then the person generally has to download it or yeah. Hangouts, it converts it automatically and sends it uh, the, the way that they would normally get it on an iPhone or, or Android or whatever. So. Yeah, I mean, that's a good point. And I, I, I actually gave that a try on my phone but it got really confusing to me when all of my SMSs, which I get a lot of from a lot of people, became integrated with all of the Google. I never knew which platform something was coming from, and the interface was just, it was just too much integration for me, which uh -huh. is hard to believe. You usually <laughs> want more. In this case, it confused me, so I turned it, I turned it off, and I, I have not tried it again. That was also when it first rolled out. You know, As with anything, it gets better over time. But when you have an experience like that, it keeps you keeps you from trying it again for a while. So I have yep, I completely understand that. Yep. Yeah. I guess my third app is Amazon, believe it or not. It's okay. Amazon because I buy so much crap and constantly <laughs> I mean I really buy a lot of stuff. Uh, I buy everything I can buy from Amazon. I buy it at home, 
So if I'm if I'm out running around and I think, oh, I need, uh, I don't know, for for our weight for our weight training stuff we're doing, I needed some some more protein powder. And when I remembered it, I open Amazon, I search, bam, Prime. It's going to be there in two days. I don't have to keep that on a list. I don't have to think about it. It's just done. Well, and, and that's the office, same thing. You know, Ken will come up to me and he'll be like, hey, we need 10 of these little things. And I'll be like, okay. Uh, in that case, I, I use it on the computer, on the web-based version. But I can do any of that from anywhere, so I use it a lot. Well, and that's kind of funny. My my home screen, you know, the, our home screens are are prime real estate. Yes. And Amazon yeah, actually like makes the list for my home screen because of I'm the same way I buy so much. Right here. Here's mine right here. Let me switch back to you real quick here. Right there, right on the side. Yep. <laughs> right in the middle. Right where, right where I can get it with my left thumb. Just like, bam. <laughs> Yeah, well, and that's the thing. You got to keep stuff close to your thumb on that uh, Galaxy Note because yes, I tried using that thing and I had to use my whole hand or, or two hands to get around on that. <laughs> yeah, it's it's big. That's what she said. <laughs> anyway. Okay, so apps. next question. Now, do you ever uh, lay down your gadgets and completely unplug? I mean, are you able to do that or completely walk away, shut them off for a day? I know you're a married guy, so a lot of times we get the stink eye and are told, hey, you better put that down or or else. But <laughs> Well, you know, I I don't think I have as hard of a time with that as Callie does. Yeah, Callie. no, that's that's what she said. In, in our interview, she said, it is almost, even if she's watching a movie, at various points she picks it up and checks her phone. So yeah. Yeah, it's bad. It's bad with her. I, I, I definitely am able to put down all of my technology. That's at, just because you're old. At certain <laughs> time. Uh, I'll give you some examples. Like in a movie, there's no way I'm going to have anything. I want everybody to shut up and leave me alone. I'm watching this movie, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, when we go, I was actually, you know what I was going to say, when we go work out, I put them down. Uh, I don't want uh, the first few days when we went to work out. I, I took nothing in there with me. I had no phone, no Pebble, nothing. Okay, but I have since discovered the Mio Alpha uh, heart rate monitor watch thing, and that has become a useful tool. So I'm using it kind of by necessity. Like I need a heart rate monitor, so I'm using. I, I guess I don't need a heart rate monitor, but the the training that we're doing is so intense that it, it kind of is critical for the level that we're doing. So I am using that. Uh, when I go on an airplane, she works. Like from the time they say you can start working to you have to put it away, <laughs> she's got her computer out. She's working. I don't do that. I don't work on an airplane unless it's critical. But even there, I do pull out my iPad mini and I play video games. So I don't know. I mean, I... I guess I probably use technology far more than other people. I feel like I'm getting rid of it sometimes, but no, I, I've, been, I, I I've, totally... been known, I've been known to sit in the jacuzzi or in the pool and work on the laptop. <laughs> so maybe I'm a little addicted. So, okay, so that, and that was going to be, since you answered yes, you know, I was going to ask if you, you know, when you are unplugged, do you ever kind of go through withdrawals where you're, you know, you're, you're, thinking, oh, man, I really should be checking this right now? Or, or are you able to completely shut it off and keep it out of sight, out of mind? I let it go. I don't care. If it's, if it's, not, on, if it's not in front of me, I don't care. Uh, but what will happen is because of the volume of contacts we get and this, the number of projects we have up in the air, I do worry sometimes if I'm away too long that, that it's just creating more of a problem for me when I get back to it, that, that I'll be buried for days. But at the same time, I, I, I have no problem letting that happen. It's just then I regret that you know I have so much to catch up on. Right. Well, and and I'm the same way. Like I, I take like this last Sunday, I took the day almost completely away. But I still in the evening had to go in and mess with my email because I get about a hundred a day. So I mean, if I don't, I know that the next day I've got two hundred to go through. So I mean, yeah. it's like you know, it's that kind of thing where you know. You're taking that day off, but you're thinking, okay, so that just means Monday I'm going to have to go through a lot of stuff to catch up. Yeah, pretty much with uh, with our schedules, uh, I am I I have enough work that I could be busy 24 hours a day, literally. And so what happens is I have to make strategic decisions to do things like 
quit working and go home and have dinner with the family, you know, on yeah. uh, you know, take some time off on a Saturday to, to go out and, you know, go to the mall, go shopping, do things with the family, uh, or go out with friends or whatever. So I, I make those strategic decisions to do that, knowing the work is there and it's piling up. And then sometimes another tactic that I have is I have things that are burning on fire and requiring responses, and I just literally ignore them forever. I let those things go, burn, and die because it's better for me to have some failures in one area and keep the ship going in general mm -hmm. than it would be to perpetually remain behind and never actually get caught up. So some things get sacrificed and when and when it turns out that if it was really critical people come back to me on it and then it gets back into the into the gist of things so that's okay and yeah. i think everybody should employ that tactic occasionally by the way yeah and i agree especially you know like who i worked with with the stuff that i did were small business owners and that's something they really need to do sometimes is just let some of those things go and and focus on running their business. So, so this is the last question before I get into a couple of uh, user or member submitted questions. Give me really quickly the three top songs. Uh, sorry, Callie, uh, the three <laughs> top songs on your playlist right now. No. Oh wow! The three <laughs> Don't sing. Not not sing them. Don't say sing them. them. Just tell you. <laughs> uh, I gotta look at. Let me look in my little media app here real quick because. Um, I know that's something that changes for most people on like a weekly basis, but but not for me actually. I'm <laughs> I'm a creature of habit. There is no well, from from what I've heard that like what you jam there in the office. I've heard you play the same songs over and. <laughs> yeah, it depends. You know, if we're talking about stuff that I like, always go to here. I always go to like, uh, I'm on a boat, <laughs> and actually anything from the Lonely Island guys. I play that a lot. Uh. Uh, and then like you know stuff like LL Cool J and and Humpty Hump and so on. But that's not really what's that's not really what I'm listening to the most. Um, what I listen to, believe it or not, I, I listen to a lot of things that are uh, country and western, which is I never thought I would enjoy before. Uh, Darius Rucker sings. Yep. Hootie and the Hall. Blowfish. <laughs> yep. Hootie and the Blowfish. He converted to being a country singer. And he's like the first black guy who got inducted into the Country Hall of Fame, I think. And he, it's, he's got a song called All Right, which I really love. Uh, let's see. I'm looking. I'm looking. One second. I got a few here. <sighs> There's a lot. I listen to the same things over and over. <laughs> There's another one I really like right now called I Hold On. By and I don't know how this guy's name is pronounced. Dirks Bentley, D I E R K S. Dirks, Dirks. Yeah, I would, I'd say that's right. Dirks, Dirks Bentley. I guess I don't know. Uh, the others, it would be, it would be hard. I mean, I could just pick another one here for you. That's random. That you would never, you would never guess this. <laughs> um, do you remember? You remember Cindy Lauper? Oh heck yeah. She sold a, She sung a song called True Colors. Yep. But then Phil uh, Phil Collins remade that song, and I freaking love his version of that song. R remade he, it as Phil Collins or as Genesis? No, uh, he did it as Phil Collins, I believe. Phil Collins, True Colors, look it up. I think it's fantastic. Callie doesn't like it at all. Uh I never said that. Yeah, she said that before. But anyway, that, there you go. That's, that's, that's what she said, right? That's what she said. That's my three. I'm sticking with it. Final answer. Awesome. Okay, so now we're going to get into a couple uh, member submitted questions. All right. Uh, the first one is from Paul Dixon. Okay. Oh, God. Yep. Here we, here we go. He says, if John P. could take one gadget or technology from a sci-fi movie or TV show and make it real... What would he choose, for example, hoverboards from Back to the Future? Oh, I would take the phaser from Star Trek. Because can you imagine what kind of fun I could have just blowing things up, lighting things on fire, stunning people? <laughs> I, I mean, that would, be, that would be my one. There's no doubt. There's no doubt about it. Yeah, that, that would be very dangerous in, in your hands, I'm afraid. <laughs> 
Okay, so uh, from Ben, and I think it's, is it Rothig? How do you pronounce his last name? Ben, ben Rothig. Rothig, okay. If there, is there a gadget you had low expectations for that you wound up finding invaluable? Right here on my wrist, this little pebble. <laughs> I, I really, I was not, I was not, I did not think I was going to be a fan of that. And so, but uh, here's another one. The boogie board. The boogie board sink. Uh, believe it or not, it's a little e-paper tablet that I can scribble on and stuff. It's got a pen built in right here. I pop that pen out and I can scribble and it's like e-paper. And then you can hit a button and save and erase and be presented with a new page. And then what you can do is uh, Bluetooth sync it to your phone. So you can sit here and make a note. You can make a bunch of notes, save, erase. Make a bunch of notes, save, erase. Make a bunch of notes, save, erase. Sync then review them all on your on your computer. I didn't really think this was going to be that cool. Guess what? Carry it with me all the time. Yep. It sounds like a, a new improved Etch-a-Sketch. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's just like an Etch-a-Sketch, but digital. And Scott says it's pronounced Dirks. Dirks, okay. There you so go. Now Dirk. we know. Dirks ben Bentley. Okay, and then uh, another one from Paul Dixon. Has John P. Ever, ever suffered gadget rage? For example, has he ever been so frustrated with a device that he's hurled it at a wall? What was the cause and what was the consequences? <laughs> yes, that has happened. I'm trying to remember. Uh, what was it? Uh, oh, oh, well, I know for one thing for sure. It, it was MacBooks, the freaking MacBook Pro, okay? When you put your hands on the keyboard of a MacBook Pro, the edge of the MacBook slices into your wrists. Yes. It's like it's freaking razor blades. It wants to kill you, okay? <laughs> In fact, I'm certain that Apple designers purposefully did that because they want to kill their customers. So the result of that was uh, I got pretty pissed off. And I went out to the garage, and I got a file, and I filed the edge off of that MacBook. It was a brand new three thousand dollar MacBook Pro, and I just took a file right to that edge, and I smoothed it off. And uh, then after that, people, yeah, I did a video about it. You can actually find it if you look on YouTube. For I don't know, I don't know how you find it. But a lot of people watched it. There's one like filing the edge off a MacBook Pro. You'll see the video, and. Uh, it was legitimate. I just did it one day. I just shot it. And then people started asking me to do it for theirs, but I didn't want to do it the slow way because with a file, it takes too long. So then I got my big angle grinder with a four and a half inch <laughs> flat disc, and I started go. I can, I can file the edge off a of MacBook Pro in like two seconds flat now. You should start a Kickstarter or something to, to do that for people. <laughs> file people's MacBook Pros down. Make them soft. Because I remember that, I actually remember that being an issue I had with it. It, it. it actually, it really hurt. I mean, it leaves a it leaves a line. It does. It makes you mad at Apple's engineers. How in the hell could they miss that? It's ridiculous. Well, and then and then they come out with a MacBook Air, which takes care of that problem, but has a whole other slew of issues we can't even get into right now. Yeah. <laughs> So, okay, so that is the show. Um, John, thank you very much for coming on, and it was great uh, talking to you. And thank you to everybody who submitted questions. Now, the next time we're going to be on here, we've got Moritz, and I always have pro trouble. Callie, you're there. What's his last name? Oh, she walked out. Oh, did she? Or it's to like to Toxeldorf. What's his last name? It's yes, something like, like that. You but gotta get Moritz T. Call him Moritz T. Okay, Moritz T. He is the guy who created the Google Hangout Toolbox, which is a tool that I use. That's how you use the lower thirds and take questions and all that stuff. So amazing guy. We're going to be doing him, uh, interviewing him on the 24th. So watch for that. So, John, thank you very much. Anything you want to say to close? Live long and prosper. Yes. I don't know. That's good. That's good. <laughs> all right. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you next time. Bye, guys.